Dr. Nasser. So, this there is your go. collarbone coming down and meeting against your breastbone, or otherwise known as your sternum. Uh -huh. And there's a vein, large vein, that comes back from your arm called the subclavian vein that kind of sneaks beneath the collarbone and then makes a curve and goes down and empties into the heart. So, we gain access to that vein by putting a needle through the skin here, tucking it underneath the collarbone and getting into the vein, and we put a wire through, and then we slide the catheter over the wire. And we use an x-ray to do this to make sure it's in the right place the whole time. Okay. Make sure that the tip is where we want it to be. And then we tunnel it then backwards from this poke hole to where we've made a little pocket to put the port. The port's a small plastic and titanium box with a little rubber top to it that sits underneath your skin. We close up this incision plus this little tiny incision with dissolvable stitches and skin glue. A little bit of swelling afterwards. They could essentially use it right away. You could use it the same day, next day, any oh, day. Oh, wow, okay. So, so it takes about a couple of days for it to heal up? Yeah. And but they can use it whenever they're ready. General, just general pain? Yeah. General pain more, most people say it feels like someone kind of kind of hits you and you have a little bruise there and then it goes away. Oh, okay. okay. Discomfort-wise, so. Um, no, we didn't, t we didn't talk about the, the, the feeding tube. We did, but I never got it on top video. So I thought you got the whole picture on video. Did I? Oh yeah, yeah. I did do it, huh? Where I drew it on the That's back of the right, car. That's right, we drew it on the back of the car. Oh. Well, it's a good thing one of us remembers. <laughs> well, you weren't the one that's on morphine. So. <laughs> oh, sure, blame the meds. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so and then what about, um, is there anything I need to worry about that port? Yes, there are two things. Uh, I was getting there. Okay. there. There are two potential complications with port placement. Number one is long-term. The ports, even though they're buried underneath the skin, the places where you go to have the chemotherapy do a phenomenal job of keeping everything as sterile and clean. The long-term risk is that they can become infected. And if they do, then they generally have to be removed. Okay. More often, we see them infected when patients with a port get an infection for another reason. They get a pneumonia. They get a, an infection somewhere else. Those bacteria get into your bloodstream as they're floating around. They latch onto the catheter because we're not supposed to have catheters in us. Mm -hmm. And then they, and once they latch onto that man-made device, they don't let go. Mm. And then they just keep flicking off little bits of bacteria that continue to keep you sicker than you should be. So we remove them when they get infected, but they get infected less than 1% of the time. Okay. It's very rare, but it does happen. Okay. Number two is an immediate uh, complication. Uh, or risk to it is that we poke right here through the skin, we go underneath your collarbone and we go into the vein. Just deep to the vein is your lung. Okay? So probably more often than we actually know we do it, that needle goes all the way through and, and instead of poking into the vein, the vein gets smushed with it as, as the needle's being pushed and then it pops through and it pokes the lung. The question always is, is, what happens when that happens? Well, again, it probably happens more often than we know, and most of the time nothing happens. But less than 1% of the time when we're doing this procedure, the lung will collapse a little ways because it got poked. We use x-ray during the test, and we take another x-ray in the recovery room to ensure that that didn't happen. But if it does happen, we usually just do an x-ray the next day, and usually nothing more is required. If it continues to collapse, it's treated by putting a little catheter in your chest by the radiologist to get your lung to expand. Stays in for about two days and comes out, and that's the. Because the lung, it just heals itself, closes up that mm -hmm. hole. Yeah, so the the way the lung works in our chest is it's if you've ever taken two pieces of glass or plastic and you got them wet, they slide past each other but they don't mm -hmm. pop apart easy. Mm -hmm. Lungs the same thing. There's a lining on the inside of the chest cavity, a lining on the lung, and there's a trace bit of fluid, and so they rub back and forth as you breathe. But if they pop apart, they don't always necessarily want to stick back together. So oh. sometimes you have to put a little catheter in to create a vacuum to suck that air out to get them to snap back together. And then once they snap back together, they stay together again. Oh, okay. So again, both of those happen less than 1% of the time. They are not common complications. They, but they are the only real major complications. And those happen less than 1%. Mm -hmm. um, another question is, is that since I'm on high blood pressure medication, what will this do of that port going straight into my heart area? 
What would that do to my heart? Nothing. It goes what, what? in the veins just outside the heart, but not into the heart. So we're not going into in the ventricles or anything in my heart. Nope. So it's veins that are outside around my heart, right. not next to the, the goal is, is that the tip is somewhere near what it's called the um, um, supraventricular uh, cava. Mm -hmm. so, so there's there's a inferior vena cava and a superior vena cava. The superior vena cava is the end vein from all the blood that's coming back from your arms and head, right before it dumps into the right side of your heart. Oh. So the goal is to get it right in there, so that, that way when, it circulates. when the chemotherapy <clears throat> goes in, number one, it's a high volume, high flow area, so that the chemotherapy can't sit there. It's immediately whisked away, pumped through your lungs, and then pumped out through your body relatively quickly. The problem with doing it in these little veins is that the flow is low and the volume is low, so it has time to potentially irritate those veins as it's passing up through the arm and so we what we like about these is that number one you don't have to keep getting poked in your arms all the time okay and then number two it's much better on your veins in that respect because the medicine immediately gets distributed plus they can draw labs from it if mm. you need labs periodically while you're there so you don't have to keep getting poked in your arm as much basically i'll just go in here and just do it's like blood because they can draw it and they can infuse through it. They can do both. Wow. So. And you can get, get medication to it. And all everything. They could hook up your regular IV to it. Wow. And just use it as your as your IV. And sometimes Interesting. When we put them in patients who have kind of destroyed their veins in their arms, it's they that's their only IV. Wow. So. So you can hook up all these little, little attachments to it, when once it's connected to the port. Um, they probably won't use it this admission. It'll, it'll be there in case you need it for future ones. Okay. So. Okay. Well, that was very straightforward. I mean, it makes sense. I it's understand. It's pretty straightforward. It takes less than less than a half hour to do it. Less than a half hour. It actually takes more time to kind of do all the little steps and to bring the X-ray machine in and out periodically to check our placement. And so that's why it takes a half hour. Because otherwise, it, it should take about ten minutes. But it takes about a half hour because all the little parts. What about what about my my feeding tube? Mm -hmm. We talked about that already. Mm -hmm. so How long? Half hour to 45 minutes. So, and that's, um, and the reason that that takes a little bit extra time is because after he does his trach, mm -hmm. then I would do the port first because the port is an all clean procedure. Whereas when we do a feeding tube, we get into your stomach to put the feeding tube in and then that becomes a less clean procedure. So mm -hmm. you want to do the less clean thing last. last. So we had to have to take off all those drapes and then clean your abdominal cavity and put all the drapes back on again. And at this point, after he gets the the the, Tra the trach in, I'm going to be dead asleep, right? Yep. Yep. So, because be, I, be, I will be breathing forcibly through my, my, my trach, right? Well, yeah, but then for us to do these procedures, they will give you medicine to, and so the machine will be breathing for you. Oh, I'll be on a breathing machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, plugged then, into the trach. Yeah, after you have a trach. And then so I want to be breathing on my own. They turn off those medicines, and then you start to breathe on your own, and then I wake up. Then you wake up. And oh, what is a wake up procedure? Do I wake up right after? I wake up three or four hours? Do I? Am I groggy? Am I not understanding what's you going on? You wake up, but you won't remember a lot of it for the first hour or two and you'll just slowly get more and more awake as you go. But a lot of patients that have surgery, um, they don't remember much of the recovery room, which you're there for about an hour afterwards. They remember when they get back here. So. What about you, do you remember? He had triple bypass surgery. Yeah. You're awake, and you'll actually answer questions, but a lot of patients just don't remember mm. afterwards. Some people do, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people... Were you on a ventilator? He was on a ventilator too, huh, when he was doing his... And you're doing your, your bypass? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you're on a vent ventilator. Interesting. Yeah. So. I don't want to remember anything, to be honest. It's yeah. just, I'm out. I don't want to, you know, yeah. like move no. forward to the next procedure. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to forget. I don't want to remember everything. Uh, most people don't like to. Or yeah. don't want to, so. Yeah. So, so the feeding tube is, is going to be two, possibly three, but usually two holes, one on your belly button and then one where the tube goes. Mm -hmm. kind of, we talked about and the, the anchors today. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, with the anchors. Right, see? And it's, it's more up here, not really on my side, it's more on my, or below my sternum. It's 
if if you had lines on your body, mm -hmm. one's right in the middle, mm -hmm. and then we use the clavicle to divide to divide things. So there's mid clavicle, mm -hmm. and then kind of the side of the clavicle. Mm -hmm. So it ends up usually being about mid clavicle mm -hmm. or mid collarbone. So it ends up being about right there, mm. usually sometimes. But that's why we put the camera in and kind of see where your stomach is sitting, so that it naturally pulls up to where it's going to stick to the abdominal wall, where that balloon and those tacks or those anchors hold it in place. Now, as a reason I can't have nothing after twelve is because uh, you don't want no food messing around. You want me to have had, had a bowel movement and everything. That plus, they they are going to give you some medications after the trach is in. And they don't want you to vomit. Hmm. And some of those medications will cause a nausea for a few seconds, and some patients vomit. And they want your stomach as empty as possible so that you don't vomit. Even with the trach in place, stuff can still sneak past it. It's not common, but it can. So they want to try to protect you from aspirating during the during the during and right immediately after the procedure. So if your stomach is empty, aspirating just means kind of coughing. Aspirating means that material that's not supposed to get into your airways gets into your airways. And you usually just when cough it up, your, right? Well, you're supposed to cough it up, but some people don't. And when you're asleep and you're on a breathing machine, they give you medicine that paralyzes you so you don't cough. Oh. So we take away that defense. So if I aspirate, I'm actually not breathing. The machine is breathing for you, so that stuff could get into your lungs. That's why we try to keep your stomach empty. Okay. So, so before I go into the to the surgery, they're going to give me something that's going to make me nausea, and I'm going to want to throw up. The anesthetic medicines that they give you to put you all the way asleep after the trach is in can cause nausea, and sometimes patients vomit. That's not good. No. So they don't make they don't, empty, though, that, they don't vomit. Well. That's true, but also, if I do vomit, my throat will start bleeding. Yes. So. That will cause a whole other complication. Yeah. Because as you're working down here, I'm bleeding up through here, mm -hmm. swallowing my blood. So, yeah. Actually, it stops. Yeah. If you keep my blood pressure low and just don't annoy my, my tumor on my throat, mm -hmm. we should be good. Yeah, I'm not going to annoy it. But uh, but uh, the, but the problem I'm worried about tomorrow. And during anesthesia, your during anesthesia after the trach is in, your blood pressure will be low. It's always a little low from the anesthesia. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm wor I'm worried about D Dr. Page because he said he's gonna rake my th my neck all the way back so he has access to my trach. But I found that if you move my neck so far back since it since the tumor is at the base of my tongue, mm -hmm. it's connected to my throat area. And I've had this happen before where I stretched my neck too far and my throat, my tumor started to bleed because I actually ripped it. Got it. So we got to be careful of that. You can't, rip, you can't push me back too far. No, but it, to be able to feel like they have plenty of room to work, you have to tilt your chin up enough to expose your neck. You're lucky because you have a longer neck and you're not super big. So sometimes we try to do tracheostomies on large patients or or people with real short necks, and it is tough to get enough angle so their head is really tilted back far, but you actually have a fairly long neck and you're thin. Just just to let you know that, because I, really I, I don't want to be bleeding yeah. and have another complication added to it because sure. I'm starting to bleed from my tumor. I won't be there at that first... But you're, but you're going to confer with him before the whole thing starts, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. oh, we've talked every day this week. Okay. So. Well, tomorrow when you talk to him, let him know that that, that could be a problem. All right, I will. So I think I think um, yeah if you if so if my stomach's empty yep. like it is right now because yep. by the time tomorrow yeah, it'll be since empty. I ate at six thirty yeah, it's gonna be empty because I'm gonna poop it out and do my bowel movement and everything so I should be good right yeah you should be fine okay okay and you wake up tomorrow with a drink a port a port and I get to eat and oh well, I can't eat yet but not right away. Relatively soon. <coughs> what a day. If it goes in tomorrow afternoon, we, we put sugar water in for a couple hours on the following day. So your surgery is on a Thursday. So Friday we do sugar water for a little while. If we do okay with the sugar water with no issues, then we start with food. No aspirating? Not, not aspirating. No pain. Oh, no pain. 
Yeah. You're gonna have you're gonna be a little sore from surgery, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to have a bunch of extra pain because then I'd be a little nervous that maybe you're leaking a little bit. I don't expect you to, but the pain would be the acid in my stomach that's leaking out, right? The food. All the food is leaking around my belly. Mm -hmm. It's not going in my stomach. Right. Oh, that's so, not good. No. We don't want food floating around in my stomach no. in my body. Correct. That's why we start with sugar water because that doesn't harm you. Oh, okay. It just I dissolves. Don't. Yeah. But if it leaks, it will. You'll feel a little burning, and oh. so it's a warner. It's a warning sign, but it's it's not a. And what happens after two days goes by and I start feeling that burning sensation? Most people don't. It's usually right away. Oh, so if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen right away, or it isn't gonna happen, because yep. that means you have a good seal. Yeah. That and the it balloon takes you about has got a good seal. hours to seal it for good. Good. So we don't ramp up the the rate right away as well because we don't want to fill up your stomach too much. So. Okay, so th this is all going to take some time to start learning how to feed from that thing, learning how to breathe from this thing. God, I'm going to be going through hell for the next seven weeks, man. But it'll allow you to get the therapy that will help with the bleeding and the tumor and all those other things. So well, the therapy all, is going to save my life, actually. They're all, uh, they're all steps to get you to where you, you're trying to get, which is to be able to treat your tumor. Mm -hmm. So that's the... That's the goal. Okay. So, okay. Any other questions? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Is she allowed no, to have questions? Right. No. no. Oh, you're cutting him I off? I feel like an, I can do it for you. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. This class, I can Here you go. <laughs> Don't think you're me. Yes. It'll be okay. It's going to be easier. <laughs> I did I got it now. Good. Good, good. Well, the more you understand, the more Can you repeat that sick one? No. <laughs> I, I can, I can I'll just watch the video again. There you go. <laughs> hey. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Hey. All right, I'll see you around too then. All right. Thanks, doctor. Bye. Do you have still any questions? No, no, no. 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 Yeah. 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 Él hágamelo. No, porque está peor, si ¿sí sabes. Sí, sí. Tony, eh, acá con su esposa. Ay, ya, ya. Aquí tenemos ¿Ya la tráquea, ah, aquí tenemos sí. el, el número dos, la vena va a correr. Aquí vamos a poner acá. El, el, el tubo porque no tenga aquí. bebés. Y aquí, esto de aquí por aquí le van a salir. Los espermatozoides por aquí le van a salir. Sí. Ah, y la comida se la van a poner por aquí para sí. que se le quite. Vamos, no a hacer un, vamos a hacer un bloqueo para que sí. no entre ningún hachiro por aquí. <risa> Las papitas pueden entrar por acá, sí. pero le bloqueamos por este lado. Y por aquí voy a poner pancakes. Por aquí voy a poner pancakes para que por para Y acá. le vamos a abrir un conducto especial para que sí. coma frijoles, sí. Ajá, sí. tortillas, <risa> carne y huevos. Sí, sí. O sea, para no, que se alimente van, por este lado. <risa> ¿Y el chorizo? Ah, no, no, ya está. Ya, 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 ya,
A ver. Esa mía. ¿Qué lo de carne? ¿Y? <risa> Mira el encebollado. Sí. Ándale. No lo hierro. Ok, ¿qué hora vamos a estar aquí mañana? Temprano. No salgas. Espera, ya estamos allá. Sí, ¿Quieres que me lleve esto? No. La bandera para ponerla fuera. ¿Quieres que me lleve esto? No, es mío. The people came by today and they, they, they give facials and hand massage, few massage for cancer patients. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to give you one. If you were here, they would give you one too, babe. Mm -hmm. No, they would give you facial. She did me a facial. No force. Blackheads are out. For surgery. Shabaka. Pero esperar por los porros. Por razón, ni me llaman ni me ni me te. Sí, pues la tratan como rey aquí. Sí, sí. Le dan masajes. Machiplón. Por razón, no dice no. Bueno, mañana es como. Sí. Voy a llevar mi. Oh, por fin te la tengo. No, ¿sabes qué es lo que haría yo? Así de cuenta. Si yo fuera el enfermero. Tocado. A ver, a ver, a ver, a ver. Algo usted enfermo. Tocado. Ajá. ¿Por qué no me dieron carrilla? Tocado. Y me dijeron, no, güey. No, güey. Y Tony. O la, la comida, así por, por una rinita. Sí. Así, que, para que no te molestando. Y el George. <risa> Pero lo tiene, al tercer día sí le van a hacer, pero ya sabes. No, lo van a llevar porque vaya por ella ya sé. Ya sé que si hace un Oye, mija, si tú fueras enfermera. ¿Ah, bueno? Ya se me llevas al tono. Yo creo que le traería las cosas así, mira. ¿Tocabas? Mira, mira. Mira. Oye, preguntamos muchas cosas, pero. No, sí. Sí, ¿ves? Se pasa. ¿Qué te.? ¿Ya se va a comer a esto? Yo creo que. I don't know these people. I don't know where they came from. I just walked to my room. Uh, just come to eat your food. That's what you want. <laughs> Bye. They smell the food. That's all I know. I see. I see. Smell the food. Está feliz porque va a estar entubado y ya no va a tener que comer por la boca. Tubo, tubo, tubo. Tubo, tubo. Que le den un tubo así como en budo. Se meten unos tamales con chile. Menudo, así. Tostado, todo. Tostado, así. Es el Y luego así le hacemos a la tripa. Para que, pa que pase. Para que pase. Le hacemos así. Para que entre. Y no te quedes. No. Lo, lo vas machacando y luego lo voy a hacer. Viste con papas. Eso es lo que me dice. Qué bueno que no fui doctor. Qué fría les para. Pero ahora es un Latin lover. No, sí, ya está. Latin lover. Vale, ya toma. Y van a estar taking naps during the day. I did, I did. I did, I did. I did, I took one at, at 2 o'clock. I couldn't, I couldn't, my eyes open and I fell asleep till 5. You want to ask for salsa for everything, chile for Oh, because they said it when I got my, my blood transfusion, I got Mexican blood. So I'm. Arriba Mexico or whatever. Ahora sí, no, ahora sí. They're going to change your passport. Yeah, I'm illegal now. It was some illegal that they got from the border. They gave blood. Yeah, you got blood from an illegal alien. I'm an illegal alien now. Bye, Roberto. Bye, Roberto. Bye, dear. I love you, bro brother. I'll check you out later. Uh, I don't know. I'm not worried about it. I know, but I'm glad. You're relaxed. Okay, my love, I'm going. No me voy, me llevan. I don't want to go to your angelitos there. Okay. I want to do a video check with them, so let them get on the internet on your phone. Yeah. Just for five minutes, so I can say I love them before I go to bed. Okay. Right now? Oh, when we go. ¿Y este de quién es? ¿Quién estuvo aquí acostada y se quitó el broche antes de dormir? Ándale, pues, pues. Ok, ya me voy. Para que hagas ya con él. Ok, voy a... ¡Un beso! Ahí está tu
Traje tu desodorante, papi. ¿Dónde está? Aquí. Tu desodorante y tu rastrillo, tu cosa. ¿Mi cosa? Sí. Está conectada a mi cosa. Uh -huh. Toma. Toma, chévere. Toma, tu chévere. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ajá, uh -huh, from my face. Okay. Uh -huh. ¿Quieres que te lo ponga ahí? Bueno. Uh, I forgot you were supposed to be in the lotion. Ay, no traje lotion, pero traje esa cremita. No, no hay lotion. La lotion no sirve mucho, mijo. Ok. Ok, bebé. Ya me voy, mi amor, que tengo que ir a bañar a mí, a acostarlo, a dormir. Mañana me voy a con el niño otra vez. Ok. Te llamo, ¿qué? Bye, Give me a kiss, baby. Give me a kiss. 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 Give me a